the rules of investing have changed with Metcalf's Law and Networks. Mm. Um, and I actually didn't, this kind of came to me as I was writing the book because I started doing some research. And so I was trained in traditional investment theory, you know, Graham and Dodd, buy things cheap, buy them when they're growing, you know, peg ratios, all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff, PEs, multiples of cash flow. And, and you know, that's, that's what you get when you go to business school and that's yeah. what you get when you're a professional investor and you look at sharp ratios and so forth. And then I started studying what's happened since these networks have emerged, principally the internet. Mm-hmm. Um, Really, the internet only, although there were some network businesses before that. And what I saw just kind of blew my mind. I mean, as you know, Metcalf's law is that the, you know, the value of a network grows at the square of its underlying user growth. And so what happens in these networking businesses, they get incredibly valuable incredibly quickly. So that if you go and you look at Google from IPO to, you know, to today, it's up 9,000%. Or if you go and you look at Amazon from IPO until today, it's 218,000%. Facebook, mm-hmm. similar kind of numbers. Mm-hmm. And I went back and I looked, and I looked at you know, some leading companies like General Motors, it's been around a long time. And you know, General Motors is up you know, 400% from 1916 to present, okay? Mm-hmm. But I mean, first of all, that's you know, 50 odd years plus or more, it's mm-hmm. at six, you know, 60, 70 years, whatever. Um, but you know, I mean, here we are in 20 years since the internet was founded, we have some network businesses that have increased by thousands of percent. Right. This breaks all traditional investing models. Yes. Okay. You're trained to buy things on a PE basis. Mm-hmm. Forget about it. And 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 so I missed this. So when I was, and I talk about this in the book, you know, when I was looking, I, you know, I was doing growth at a reasonable price investing in the in the you know th- during this whole time frame. And I would look at something like an Amazon, or I would look at something like a Facebook, or I would look at a Google. And I would say, yeah, you know, that's interesting. It's growing nicely, but they're not making that much money, and the mm-hmm. multiples are crazy. People are paying mm-hmm. insane multiples of earnings, or even there are no earnings in Amazon's case, yeah. right? And I said, I can't do it. It's just not, it doesn't fit my model, mm-hmm. right? Boy, what a mistake that was, right? Yeah. Because I didn't understand the way this new networking model changes the math of making these kinds of investments. And yes. so, again, part of the reason I wrote the book and part of what really you know resonated with me is, okay, Granted, I miss these network businesses that were growing off of the internet. I'm not going to miss this one. Yes, yes. <laughs> right? Here we got the same thing. And by the way, this is better than Amazon. It's better than Google because we're not just talking Google's, you know, information and search. Amazon is, you know, Walmart online and 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 things. Yeah. This money touches everything. Right. Absolutely. I mean, there's no, there's nothing in the world that doesn't happen without money. If Satoshi's become the base layer of money, which I sincerely believe will happen, don't know the time scale, but I believe it will happen. These things are going to be so valuable, people's heads are going to spin. Yeah. And so, you know, I just felt like I wanted to try and point that out in the book mm-hmm. to people thinking about this as an investment. You, you just don't want to miss it. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I get people's fears about it. And I, I have my client base in my investment management business is on the older side in general. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they're, they're skeptical, understandably. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, fine, I get it. I'm not suggesting you take 100% of your money and put it in Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. But what I am suggesting is you can afford to put 1%, 5%, 10%. Mm-hmm. You can afford that. Yeah. You know, even if I'm wrong and it goes to zero, it's not going to change your lifestyle. And if I'm right and it does a 10-bagger and then another 10-bagger and then another 10-bagger, it's gonna improve you're your going you're, you're to be really <laughs> glad you did it, yeah. right? Yeah. Just like you know, the people who bought it at 10000 are very glad they have it now at 100. Well, mm-hmm. you know, I think in five years it's going to be worth a million. And if you didn't buy it at 100, you're going to have regret. So. Exactly. I just think it's a point that's important to make. No, it's it's very important. And this whole idea of us conforming our models to the right. current technological paradigm makes us blind when the tech paradigm changes. Well, that's right. right? And, yeah. And I mean, they say there is nothing new under the sun, but sometimes there is. There I mean, is. in, yeah, in technology, yeah. there actually is. I mean, these things did not exist. That's the defining feature of technology. Right. There's always something new under the sun. Well, that's right? exactly yeah. right. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, and... It's funny. I was at a conference. I talked to James Grant, who's a great, you know, monetary scholar, and you know, runs a conference. He's, he's a gold guy. And I said to him, I said, I said, James, you know, by Menger's definition, this stuff's turning into money. You got to, you got to learn to respect it. You got to take a look at. It. He said, he said, ah, come back to me when you've been around for a thousand years. And I said, James, I said, <laughs> I said, wait a minute. You mean to tell me that you know, when commercial air flight became available, you didn't accept it because yeah. it hadn't been around for a thousand years? Right. I mean. You know, once it became, I mean, it was dangerous in the early days, but once right. commercial air flight became safe, it was just a better way of doing things, and sure. you used it. That's what this is. It's That's a right. better technology, and yes. so you're going to use it because it makes sense. It improves upon what existed before. 
right? Amen to that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we're all grasping at analogies here to try to describe the profundity of this thing. Right. Uh, the one that I went for was the number zero, right? Like you needed this. Yeah. There was this idea that was just so useful and it made computation better, faster, cheaper, less prone to error for merchants, right? Okay. If you use a zero-based numeral system versus not. So like it's an, it's, a, it's an idea that gives you a distinct competitive advantage. I see. Right. And so Bitcoin's sort of like that. Like it's just an idea. Obviously, it's an idea that's rooted into reality through proof of work mining. Right. Whereas number zero is a bit more on the abstract side. Something like commercial airlines is a bit more on the tangible side. Right. right. Bitcoin's somewhere in between. Right. 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 Um, but ultimately, it's like, how do you stop that really useful idea? Because yeah. if it just makes, if it just does the job better than other ideas, then it's going to spread. That's exactly right. And, yeah. and I don't see it. I mean, and so when people say it's going to zero or it's not, I'm, I'm saying, tell me what's going to make that happen. I, I just don't yeah. see it. When people tell me it's going to zero, I'm like, no, it's much more akin to zero. Actually, <laughs> right. Yeah, you need to right. In terms of an innovation. Yeah. 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 Um, and yeah, just back on the game theory topic, sure. um, you know, there's this saying by, uh, I won't even attribute it. Uh, it's a guy that wrote on the philosophy of war. Mm. Uh, his last name is Schmidt. I don't like to attribute quotes anymore because I get them wrong all the time, but I'm pretty sure I'm right about this one, okay. Carl Schmidt. He said, sovereign is he who decides the exception. Yes. Right. So again, if you get to decide the exception to the rules, yes. then you're sovereign over everyone playing that game. Yeah, that's right? a fact. And that's yeah. basically what a central bank is doing. It's just right. picking winners and losers. Yep. It's doling out the points of the game, these economic games. Therefore, yep. it's corrupting the game, degenerating right. the game. Well, what is Bitcoin? It's just the game that nobody can game. Correct. Right? It's the game where since no one can make an exception, it makes everyone sovereign. Correct. Basically. The nodes, the nodes are sovereign. Yes. All of them. Right. And, and yes. Yeah, they can propose a change. If the nodes don't accept it, it doesn't change. Yeah. Or it, you know, again, it's a bit paradoxical. You could also say, since no one can make an exception, no one's sovereign. But when you say no one's sovereign, it's the same thing as saying everyone's sovereign. Everyone's sovereign. sovereign. Exactly. Yeah. Same same thing. So it's like the, the the importance of that. When you understand that everything we do, all the interactions we have, are game like. Yes. Most of them are denominated yeah. in money, right? Or no, that's, points. that's that's a really good analogy, and I had not thought of it in those terms. I mean, game. It's a game. Yeah, it's a game. Money is a game. It's a game. And the Fed controls it. <laughs> and they game it. And they game it. The Fed yeah. games it. Yeah, so I mean, Bill Ackman calls up and says, you know, the banking system is going to fail if you don't bail out Silicon Valley Bank. Yeah. And guess what? Silicon Valley Bank gets bailed out. Exactly. Yeah. Picking and, winners and losers. Yeah. yeah. And all the all the venture capitalists who had all their money in Silicon Valley Bank, who should have taken a 20% haircut, right. by the way, if we had followed Black Dot and the law, you know, they yes. got bailed out. Yes. Yeah. And that's... And by the way, that costs everybody, you know, in terms of gasoline and, and groceries. Of course. Right. Yeah. All yeah, all the costs of that failure get externalized. Yeah. yeah. I mean, spread out. Yeah. You know, it's just a few pennies to everybody, but you add it all up and, yeah. and right? A Shavings few pennies make it, a pile. Yeah, it adds up. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, click here to find more just like it, and here to find our most recent episode. Also, make sure to like this video to help shine light on the corruption of money. And be sure to subscribe to this channel to stay connected.